Hey guys, Kev Pretty Air. Today we're gonna do a tutorial on delayed flicks. Now delayed flicks are a supremely powerful move in 1v1s, and you'll see them all the time at the top levels of the game. Here's some examples, that first one with a very high trajectory. You can get very powerful ones with lower trajectories as well. Uh, in the example after this, you can even use air roll to change the direction of the flick. Now to teach you this, I'll do a little demonstration on car physics. We'll go and check out my presentation with beautiful artwork. And then I'll show you how to practice in free play and give you a few tips. Now there's a lot to learn, so let's get right into it. So the first thing you need to know is that physics works differently in Rocket League than in real life. So in normal physics, this is the top example. You have a ball with an angular trajectory approaching a flat surface. Let's say 60 degrees. Simply put, once it hits that flat surface, it reflects. So the angle of incidence, the approaching angle is 60 degrees is equal to the angle of reflection, 60 degrees. Now in the bottom example, in Rocket League physics, the center of mass is the originating point for a force vector. So whenever a ball collides on top of the hitbox, you get a diagonally upwards vector here that changes the ball trajectory after the bounce. That means if you have an angle of incidence, say 60 degrees, you might get something more like 50 degrees after the bounce. Not totally accurate, but you get the point. So this explains some of the weird interactions with ball collisions that we see in the game. If you drop a ball on the front of the car, an up into the right vector imparts a force on the ball, which makes the ball spew forwards. Now in dribbling, that means when you balance the ball in the front of the car, you notice that the ball will move ahead of the car, meaning you have to speed up to catch up to the ball to get the ball balanced somewhere on the middle of the car. Now similarly, if you drop a ball in the back of the car, the ball will spew out behind the car due to that vector to the left and up. So when you're dribbling, this will slow the ball down, and if you slow the car down enough, you can get the ball back onto the middle of the car. Now, if you drop a ball right above the center of mass, or the point where the car pivots, the ball will bounce upwards. This is really important to understand. When you do a delayed flick, you want the ball to move upwards and away from the roof of the car. So at some point, you have to position the ball on top of the center of mass. So to accomplish this delayed flick, it gets a little complicated, but I'll try to keep it simple. So you're gonna position the ball in the hood of your car, just as you are in a dribble. You'll jump, you'll boost, and you'll tilt your car down, all three at the same time. So jump, boost, tilt, and while you're mid-air, you're going to position the ball near the center of mass, like in the image here. Once you do that, you flick. That's it. Sounds overly difficult, but in practice, it's really not. So let's take a look at that same clip again. We're gonna boost and bounce this on the front of the car to speed up the ball. We're gonna jump, boost and tilt down just to angle that car and position the ball on top of the center of mass and then you're gonna flick. Now you might ask why do you want to flick at this point? By positioning the ball here the forward dodge will hit the ball up and away from the roof of the car. This is how you get a powerful delayed flick. Before we get into practice, just a quick note about car selection. Each car has a different center of mass, and this affects where the ball needs to be placed before you jump, boost, and tilt. So for the popular breakout, two things are happening here. First, the visual model doesn't match the hitbox. So you can see here the nose is not part of the hitbox. Second, the center of mass is slightly behind the middle point of the hitbox. That means whenever you dribble for a delayed flick, from a visual perspective, the ball needs to be balanced a little further back closer to the windshield like I am here. In contrast, for a car like the X-Devil, which has a center of mass closer to the middle of the hitbox, from a visual perspective, the ball can rest further forward on the hitbox. As for this delayed flick, you might notice that I get a very high trajectory. And that's because when I dodged, the ball hit a little behind my center of mass, hit near my tail. This creates more height, but sacrifices a little more power. That's example on the left. On the right, if you hit the ball in front of the center of mass, you'll get a very flat trajectory. Use this information, combined with the earlier point about hitting the ball near your center of mass, to help explain your delayed flicks trajectory. And you can use it to troubleshoot your own issues. Now that I've taught you the physics, let's go ahead and practice. So I'm using Rocket League Trainer Shot for more repetition. There's a download link for that in the description. But if you're on console or you don't have access to Trainer, then you can just as easily dribble around the map and do this organically. So I'm going to give you a few tips. 
The first is adopt an improvement mentality. It's about experimenting. Change a variable like where the balls bounce before jumping and then test for the results. Personally, I set aside 30 minutes a day for the last two weeks to get to this point. So if you're willing to put in that time, put in the focused effort, experiment, you'll be able to get to this level pretty quickly. So from a mechanical standpoint, you can also try air rolling right after your jump to give you a little bit more directional control. So you're just tilting down, holding air roll, and you can get some angled shots like that. Now, the biggest tip I can give you for how to execute this properly is to match the ball speed and the car speed before you go into the delayed flick. If you wait a half second before flicking to make sure your car is matching the ball speed, that it's perfectly balanced, and then you flick, your success rate will be much higher. So in the rest of this video, look for how I match the ball speed as it's on the hood of my car, and you'll see that most of the failed weaker hits are due to not matching the ball speed. Lastly, Pay close attention to how far I am within the ball indicator when I'm bouncing the ball. That's going to impact the trajectory of my delayed flick. Anyway, that's going to wrap this video up. Hope you guys are motivated to give it a shot and invest some time into it. Your 1v1 game will step up to a new level. So thanks for all the support and have a good one.